ago, dozens of them started washing up on the shores of the Fraser River. No one knew why, so provincial biologists launched a special project to try and solve the mystery and to find out more about the sturgeon. We have a special report from Jim McQuarrie of Country Canada. Late August, early evening, on the Fraser River near Mission. Terry Glavin, Larry Commodore, and Marv Rosenau toss a line out for sturgeon. Glavin is a writer, Commodore a native environmentalist. Rosenau is a fish biologist with the BC government. What links the three is wonder and worry about sturgeon. These are uh, sort of fish from the dinosaurs. Sturgeon-like animals first showed up in the uh, lower Jurassic period. It is so strong, it is such a big creature, it is so resilient. If this fish, if this creature can't survive what we are doing to the, the world around us, then what does that say? It says we may have pushed sturgeon too far, beginning with the great and brief sturgeon fishery of a hundred years ago. Fraser River sturgeon really got hammered around the turn of the century. In the late 1890s, there were 1.1 million pounds of sturgeon that were taken out of this river in a single year. And uh, almost immediately afterwards, the fishery crashed. Some giants remain, surprise trophies for succeeding generations of fishermen. The rules didn't call for catch and release until 1994. And even that would never have happened without a modern sturgeon mystery that began three summers ago. September 1993, Marv Rosenau gets an anxious phone call. Something strange and huge has washed up on the riverbank. A few days later, another. Well, it was astounding because here's an animal that's uh, probably over 100 years old. Then another and another until a dozen sturgeon weighing a thousand pounds and more each lay dead on the shore. Like, I was quite blown away by the fact that uh, we had that many fish of that size um, die. During the late summer of 1994, the wash-ups began again. Only this time, there are two dozen deaths. Rosenau's small department is flooded with work and charged with alarm. We don't have a good idea how many of those large fish are left. And it was a little bit frightening because you don't know if that's 1% of the population, 5%, 10%, or 90%. The most obvious suspect in the sturgeon deaths is pollution, the industrial poisons we've dumped into this river for decades. But autopsies have all but ruled that out. We don't know what happened. All we do know is that three dozen huge, apparently healthy sturgeons died and made headlines day after day, two summers in a row. And because of that, a very private fish became a very public concern. That's why, for the summer of 1995, a team of researchers hunts the river for sturgeon, looking for answers too long ignored. Oh, what a gorgeous animal. Did you get him on the rod, or did you get him on the long line? Ah, on the rod, okay. The goal is to learn more about a creature of the deep and the dark, like just how many of the huge 100-year-old breeders are left. 156.0 centimeters total length. This 20-kilogram specimen is too small and too young to spawn. This fish is probably in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 years old. Next day, better luck, a bigger fish. Probably a mature fish, but uh, it doesn't appear to be a spawner, so we'll probably just let this one go. First, though, this sturgeon needs an ID tag, so they'll know if they catch it again. Seven Foxtrot, seven Delta. It's painstaking, slow work, but at least no one worries about getting bitten. Sturgeon don't have teeth. As soon as these barbells contact the food item, the mouth automatically retracts and it forms a vacuum in the buccal cavity and sucks in any food item.
sturgeon have a reputation as scavengers. Everything from rocks to dead cats have been found in their stomachs. But we're learning they can be hunters, too. We think that the very large fish probably chase down live salmon. It's really an exciting discovery to actually observe that happening. They'll swim by a salmon, they'll turn sort of sideways, suck back a live salmon. Late in the day, an even bigger sturgeon. One that's finally big enough to warrant the minor surgery that will reveal the sex. And what we have here, a very large male. That's disappointing news for the researchers. They need to find and follow large females. We really want to know where these fish spawn. We have absolutely no idea where they spawn, when they spawn. It looks like it's a female and she's going to spawn within the next uh, year or 18 months. Then we, we apply radio tag and what we're going to do is follow these fish to their uh, spawning location. It's a critical first step. If we can protect those breeding areas, we buy time to learn more about these mysterious creatures and perhaps ensure the sturgeon a future. If that happens, it will be because of research like this, made possible by three dozen giant sturgeons who force themselves on the public conscience. The general public who probably doesn't know a sturgeon from a snake, all of a sudden realizes what a sturgeon is. If we lose this species, what we have lost is something that has contributed to the human experience in this part of the world for the past 10,000 years, economically, culturally, spiritually. We are all diminished as people, as, as a society and as a species, to have unintentionally destroyed another species of much greater antiquity than our own. Sports is still ahead.